Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 2 and continuing ahead with the next topic that is 2.4 Modified Condition Decision Coverage Testing. In short, it is also known as MCDC testing. So this is another type of testing which requires you to understand how exactly a decision table can be used in order to define, minimize and uh, right effective test cases. So the very first thing here is to understand a little bit of theoretical concept with respect to MCDC. When compared to decision testing, which considers the entire decision as a whole and evaluates the true and false outcomes in separate test cases, MC and DC testing considers how a decision is made when it includes multiple conditions. So generally here, what we are trying to understand is when it comes to MCDC, a particular given scenario with multiple conditions may require different types of uh, scenarios and not all the scenarios may be required at any point of time to be executed for entire scenario. So thus, using MCDC concept, you actually try to reduce your efforts in order to identify the minimum test cases to have maximum or 100% coverage of that scenario. How we will, have, how we will be able to do that? and uh, what will be the approach to that that is what we will be trying to understand here there's a lot more to explore in theoretical way to understand more about mcdc but as it is a evaluation based concept we will try to prefer to have an example and understand more about the same so here is an example which i'm considering to make you understand in order to explore what exactly the outcome can be so here is a scenario where i'm talking about considering a condition with certain gates where you see we have A and B or C. So here the double ampersand represents a AND gate and a straight line that is a bar represents the OR gate. So that means the right side table can be very well understood with respect to this particular scenario. And when it comes to uh, applying the technique, it is really important to identify out of these eight test cases where we have eight possible combinations of these three conditions. We need to identify those conditions which we should select in order to minimize our test cases but have 100% coverage on the scenario. So the first and very first important thing is that what will be the outcome, how you decide on that. So the gates are provided to you deciding the outcomes of these conditions. So it says that A and and either B or C must be true in order to have the outcome as true. So A is mandatory where B or C any one can be true in order to get the true outcome. So that's how the table is actually created and uh, you know this from the basics and foundation as well. So you should not have any issues understanding the same. So let's understand more about applying this technique and deriving the minimum number of test cases. In order to apply uh, modified condition decision coverage, it is more important to understand that how each condition is covered. So to start with, we actually take up the uh, first condition here, that is A, and we are trying to see if any varying outcome of A is actually impacting the outcome or not. So any input here, if it is flipped or changed, for example, if it is true, it has an outcome, and if it case in it, it is false, then it has a different outcome, then we consider those tests. For example, let's consider the test one, where you see that all three tests are true and the outcome is also true. Now let's figure out which one of the other tests is having a flip on the condition A and has a different output. So if we compare with test number five, you see that there is a different outcome if A is flipped. So here A is otherwise false, and B and C remains true, thus the outcome is false. So now 1 and 5 is a good test case for us as a pair to be executed. As we have to try with various combinations in order to achieve the maximum coverage or 100% coverage. Now let's take the second test case. So here, let me just change a color. So test case 2. And here if you see, the scenario is A true, B true, C false. And there's another one, which is test case 6, where you see A is flipped, but the other two remains the same. And then, of course, it has a different outcome. So thus, 
you have 2 and 6 also a good pair where the outcome is actually different. When you talk about again a next scenario <coughs> where uh, if you try to consider test case number 3 and you see that okay let me just pick up another color here So here if you see uh, A is true, B is false and C is true. And then if you consider test case number seven, uh, A is flipped, but B and C remain same as test case number three. But yes, if A is flipped in these scenarios, the outcome is different. Thus, we can also consider a pair of three and seven as a good test case for us. Now that's with respect to test case, with respect to condition A. If condition is flipped, the outcome also flips and this is how you identify the pair of test cases which might be a good combination in order to execute a test. Now let's move to the next condition that is B. Similarly just like A we have to try and see if the order of B is flipped or the input of B is flipped does that impact an outcome and that is how you select a good pair of test cases. Now again to start with let's take up the test case one, where you see all three are true, then the outcome is true. Now we have to find out the other test case where B is flipped, but the A and C remain same. So there is a test case three, which says B is false, but A and C remains true. But here, if you see, the outcomes are also true. That means these are not a good test case for us because the output remains the same, even if the condition is flipped. Now let's try with another one here where uh, we have the test case as 2. So when you try with 2, here you see that B is true, whereas A and C are like A is true, C is false. Let's find out the alternate pair of this where B is flipped in this kind of scenario. That is, we have, yeah, we have 4. So if you see here, A remains true and uh, C remains false, but B is flipped where B in blue case is true, but here it is false. And that's actually turning out the outcome as well. That means changing the output. So that's where the, the test case, which we can pick from here is two and four. Now, it is also possible that if you can quickly pause the video and start looking at your own way of identifying anything more, and that would help you to practice a little bit and understand that yes, I'll be able to find any kind of difference, but let me tell you if you would like to continue ahead that beyond this everything else is false so that means nothing will give you a good pair of test cases from the condition b so from b we only have two and four again to continue ahead the next one is condition c so that is how you have to try it with all possible conditions by flipping them and see that what's the possible outcomes so in this case again let's start with one where the C condition should be concentrated. And let's find out another one, which is two, where if you see A and B should remain the same and C should be flipped. But if you see the outcome is true for both the scenarios, that means this is not a good pair for us. Let's take the third, because one and two is now tested or covered in terms of like identifying the test cases. And we have three, that is true, false, true, where we are targeting the C as true the alternate case is 4 where we see a and b remains the same but c is actually flipped and the outcome is also flipped so that means 3 and 4 are good test cases for us but again after as we have covered 1 and 4 to evaluate the rest cases actually have the same output thus we will not get any other good pair of test cases now this is how it is simple and easy to understand how to evaluate your set of test cases. But that's not all. We need to do further minimization of the test cases in order to finally have the right set of test cases to be executed. So now based on the analysis, we have figured out that these are the test cases which can be actually helping us to have a coverage, 100% coverage on the scenario, but still MCDC is not yet over until unless we minimize the test cases, because all these techniques are helpful to minimize the test cases with 100% coverage. Now let's understand how we can further minimize it. So if you look at the test cases right now here, we can pick up two and six from condition A, 
2 and 4 from condition B and C 3 and 4, then we can come to a conclusion that if we execute the test cases 2, 3, 4 and 6, then at least each test case or two test cases from each scenario will be executed and it will be covering different conditions with different outcomes as well as giving you 100% modified condition decision coverage. And also to add minimum test cases for 100% modified condition decision coverage achieved by n plus 1 test cases where n is the number of conditions that is a b c so 3 plus 1 is 4. So it's very easy for any individual to find out that what would be the minimum number of test cases required for 100% MCDC coverage, but it becomes quite complicated and difficult when it, the options are about which test cases to be picked up as four test cases. So you must be able to apply the technique in order to find out the right set of test cases to complete the 100% modified condition decision coverage. So here, 2, 3, 4, 6 will cover all three scenarios with different outcomes and also will be covering three different conditions and 100% coverage on the scenario. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Do not worry, we'll be getting ahead with some more questions during the sample portion of this chapter. So stay tuned for that. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.